Hey there, welcome to Life Noggin. You know what would be really cool? If we had a hole that traveled straight through the earth from pole to pole. I mean, you can go from seeing Santa to seeing some penguins in Antarctica in no time at all. But anyway, you might be wondering, how long would a trip like that actually take? Well, let's start off with some simplifications. Firstly, we're going to assume that the earth has the same density everywhere, is a perfectly symmetric sphere, and the hole has no air in it, because otherwise the air resistance will cause you to reach terminal velocity, meaning your speed will eventually plateau. So with those assumptions out of the way, we're ready to begin. Let's suppose you're standing next to this super dangerous hole and fall in. And like you'd normally experience if you fell into any hole, you're going to accelerate down. But how much you accelerate depends on how far you are in the hole. See, when you're at the top of the hole, the entire Earth is below you, so you'll experience the same gravitational acceleration as you normally would, 9.8 meters per second squared, and you'll start to speed up as you fall. But then, things change. Now you are inside the hole, so some of the Earth is above you and some of it is below you. And this means that the gravitational forces are both pulling you up as well as pulling you down. So your acceleration is going to change. Luckily for us, there's a simple trick that we can make use of to figure out how much. Let's pretend you are inside a spherical shell with a uniform density. In here, no matter where you are, the gravitational forces from every part of that shell will cancel out. To actually prove this, you need to know a super cool thing called calculus and add up the forces from every single tiny portion of the shell. But to keep this video from getting too math heavy, just trust me that it works. Now, as you are falling towards the center, the parts further from the center than you are form a spherical shell. And we just said that all of the gravitational forces from that shell will cancel out. So this means that we can simply pretend that that part of the Earth isn't there. And instead, you are standing on the surface of a smaller Earth. So as you fall, the Earth basically gets smaller and smaller and your downward acceleration decreases. And once you reach the center, you won't experience any acceleration at all. But remember, you are still falling down pretty quickly, so you'll zoom right past the center towards the other side. And from there, instead of the Earth shrinking, it's getting larger and larger as you fall down since you are now moving away from the Earth's center. And with all that Earth above you, the acceleration will flip directions and now will be pointing up. But since you are still traveling down, this means your velocity will start to slow, eventually reaching zero when you get to the other side of the hole. And if you don't jump out, you'll fall right back in and oscillate back and forth in the hole forever. I don't know about you, but I definitely have better things to do with my time. Like make these amazing videos. But assuming you only travel through the hole once, using some physics, we'll find that this whole trip will take you around 42 minutes. Not too shabby. So what do you think the coolest way to travel across the world is? Let me know in the comment section below. If you are into following everything Life Noggin does, then you should definitely check out Life Noggin Studios' first ever documentary, Internet Kids. It's premiering at Buffer Festival this year, but you can watch the trailer right now. Ian Doki, my best human friend and co-creator of Life Noggin, helped make the film, so you know it's gonna be good. Check it out now. There's a link in the description if you're on your phone. As always, I'm Blocko. This has been Life Noggin. Don't forget to keep on thinking.